Where did the finite element method come from? It is not just a simulation tool. It's a powerful transformation of physics into solvable equations. Let's break it down and derive the weak form, step by step. Let's walk through the weak form derivation in the finite element method. We begin with the strong form of a 1D differential equation, where the internal force is balanced by an external force Fx. Next, we approximate the displacement field using shape functions. This gives us the residual, a measure of how far the approximation deviates from the strong form. To find the best approximation, we enforce that the residual is orthogonal to test functions, leading to the weighted residual form. Using integration by ports, we transfer the derivative from the trial function to the test function, reducing continuity requirements. Finally, by replacing the test function with shape functions, we arrive at the discretized weak form, a linear system KU equals F. This is the cornerstone of the finite element method. In this animation, we derive the weak form for a 1D bar under actual load. We start from the strong form. The internal actual force is balanced by the external load Fx. To apply the finite element method, we multiply by a test function and integrate. This is the Galerkin method. Integrating by parts moves the second derivative of the trial function, reducing continuity requirements. Substituting shape functions into the weak form gives us the discrete element equations. The final system is Ku equals F where K is the global stiffness matrix and F contains body forces and tractions. This displacement-based formulation is widely used for bars, rods, and actual members. Isoparametric linear finite element has two nodes, positioned at minus 1 and plus 1 in its internal coordinate system. The shape functions associated with these nodes are constructed such that each function equals 1 at its corresponding node and varies linearly across the element, reaching 0 at the opposite node. Let's walk through a simple Python FEM solver for a 1D bar. We consider a bar of length 1 meter fixed at the left end with a uniform body force of 1000 newton per meter. The material has a young modulus of 210 gigapascals and a constant cross-sectional area. We discretize the domain using two linear elements, giving us three nodes. For each element, we compute the local stiffness matrix using the formula Ea divided by element length multiplying by this vector, and the local load vector using a simple midpoint rule. These are assembled into the local stiffness matrix and force vector. Then we apply a Dirichlet boundary condition at the left end. Displacement equals zero. This is done by overwriting the first row and column of the global matrix. We solve the resulting linear system using NumPy solver. Finally, we plot the displacement field. Since the body force is uniform and the boundary condition is fixed at one end, the displacement increases quadratically toward the free end. This basic code shows how easy it is to implement them for 1D problems and forms a foundation for more complex power and beam models. But what if the structure isn't just a bar? How do we go for a simple actual load to bending in beams? In the next video, we will derive the beam equation from first principles and solve a 1D beam problem using FEM. Don't miss it. If you're into FEM, SPH, CFD, remeshing, or just enjoy watching solids get squished by clever math, you're in the right place. I dive into open source solvers, GPU acceleration, and how these methods actually work under the hood. So hit subscribe or better, hop on the mailing list at opensourcemac.com. No spam, just good stuff. And if you want to support or ask deeper questions, there's always my Patreon. Thanks for watching and happy coding.